All right, everyone, Cowboy Trades here. Welcome back to the channel for another update on Bitcoin. So the moment we've all been waiting for is here. Bitcoin has finally picked a direction. The end of this boring sideways choppy consolidation period may be upon us as Bitcoin breaks to the downside of two of these bearish diamond top formations. Now, while this is happening, EMA ribbons are getting extremely tight. Oscillators and volatility metrics are cooling for a major, major move for the market. So let's talk about all this and more. Let's talk about my price targets and the next move for Bitcoin. We'll also update some new economic data and also some S&P 500 charts coming into the end of the week. So starting off with Bitcoin, we talked about this major pattern in our last video, decision within 48 hours. And as you can see, that decision has finally been made. We came to the apex of this original diamond top formation, which is in the name a top formation. This is a bearish technical. Uh, we fell to the downside side of this now I also did update this over on Twitter while this was potentially forming, uh, but it looked like when I posted this over on Twitter, we were making another diamond top formation at the apex of this larger diamond top formation. So you can see the first one here in blue and the second one that formed here in orange. Now, as you can see, we've fallen to the downside of both of these within the past four hours. In fact, within the past 12 hours or so, we did fall to the downside of this larger one. We didn't really have a clear and concise break, so I decided to wait uh, and see how this second diamond top formation plays out. And as you can see, Within the past four hours, we have reverted back into this and it looks like we've rejected from the upwards trending line of support uh, in our secondary diamond top formation. We also reverted into the four hour EMA ribbons, which are getting extremely tight. Uh, and over on the one hour time frame, we did push back into these EMA ribbons and it looks like we are kind of getting stuck underneath these right now as they have flipped bearish. Now, the four hour EMA ribbons have not yet flipped bearish. They are very, very close to flipping bearish. Uh, we talked about this in the last video as well. Uh, if you do know why this is extremely worrying is because obviously when the EMA ribbons get tighter and tighter and tighter, this lets us know that a big move is coming for the markets. Halfway through this previous diamond top formation, you can see from this low, the EMA ribbons were colliding into each other and getting extremely tight. And as they got their tightest around about this range, Bitcoin had an explosive move up about 9%. So if we don't hold the bottom of the four hour EMA ribbons of support, we may see, you know, a move like this, nine or 10%, but in the opposite direction. So today's daily candle body close is really, really important because, you know, as I said, we fall into the downside of this larger diamond top formation. We we have our first daily candle body close outside of this larger blue diamond top. And of course, this slightly smaller diamond top that we've got over here in orange, uh, whichever one you're looking at, whether you're looking at either of these diamond top formations, whether you're looking at the bottom of these EMA ribbons on the four hour time frame, if we start to put in daily candle body closes beneath 28,000, we're going to be confirming the break of this larger diamond top formation. We're going to be confirming the break to the downside of this smaller diamond top formation. And we're also going to be closing a daily beneath the four hour EMA ribbon. So all in all, this daily candle body close right now is very, very important for Bitcoin. Keep your eyes on 28,000. This 28,000 level we've spent absolutely ages. In fact, almost an entire month trading uh, right at above around 28,000. We've been slightly beneath it, slightly above it, beneath it, above it, beneath it, above it. This sideways chop uh, really has just been very, very boring. But as I said, this may be coming to a close very, very soon. So I think a large move is coming for Bitcoin very, very soon, of course, as we are looking like we're confirming a direction to the downside, it's looking like maybe a very explosive 9 or 10% move for Bitcoin could be coming very, very soon. Now, uh, like I said, we had a 9% move the last time these EMA ribbons got extremely tight. If we do witness around the same kind of move, we could see Bitcoin falling down to about 25,500. Now, uh, this is a price target if I can find the moving average, that does seem very, very similar because I do believe this is also the 200 week moving average. Yeah, as you can see right here, 25,600. I believe if we also zoom out a tiny bit, is it this touch point right here, all the way back here in August, 25,200. These data points over here, uh, 25,300. And also if we're to complete something like a BART pattern, let me remove this here. 
get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. You can see we've got a parabolic run to the upside. We've got a spiky top formation, which is also this diamond top that we've broken to the downside of. If we just start falling from here, we may come down and fill this bark pattern at 24,000. So in the immediate short term, there's a lot of price targets round about 25,500 down to about 24,000. And like I said, all of this is really hingent on where Bitcoin closes today. If we close beneath 28,000, things could get very, very ugly very, very quick. So in the lower time frames, that's really all I have to update. Higher time frames, of course, as we've been discussing on the channel, daily time frame, this bearish divergence is just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. If we start falling, then, you know, as this divergence has been playing out since this RSI top on the 17th of January, this is a divergence that's well established about 80 days into the trend. If we start breaking down now, we're going to have 80 day bearish divergence potentially pushing the price action down very, very fast. On the weekly time frame, looking at oscillators, they're equally not looking as hot. We do have hidden bearish divergence playing out where you've actually got the price action slightly coming to the downside in the past uh, few weeks or so. But with this, you're seeing some metrics like the stochastic RSI and the MFI pushing up a bit higher. Really, this is super prominent over in the MFI, uh, in the stochastic RSI right now. So stochastic RSI, the moving averages are around about 100 right now, super overbought. The MFI is pushing up at around about 70. The squeeze momentum indicator has had a drastic tear to the upside. Lots of room to move to the downside for these. And also, as we previously discussed in our last video, uh, if you haven't watched this, I will just revise this one more time but this fractal that we've got with the stochastic rsi over extension looks very very similar to what happened over in this top so you can see uh, over in the stochastic round about august and round about november we had a double top in the stock but what happened in the price action is we had one top we broke down lower when the stochastic broke down and then when the stochastic flipped back bullish we had a higher high correlating to this double top in the stochastic rsi now if we look at the stock right now since we also went on this massive face tear very similar to bitcoin's all-time high this pattern, you know, this low that was established, this low that was established, parabolic run up into this uh, pattern over here is so, so similar. We had a top over on 100 on the stochastic RSI correlating uh, to this first top round about here and here in the price action. Stochastic broke back down lower, price broke back down lower. Then you saw the stochastic break back up and make potentially, well, it's at 100 right now, so it can't go any higher really for the stock but we could potentially be seeing this exact same fractal uh, in the price action and in the oscillators and also in this consolidation range that we had uh, playing out once again for Bitcoin before that next major melt to the downside. Now, oscillators being super overextended will definitely help uh, consolidate and allow for this brutal move to the downside. This 80 day bearish divergence is also definitely going to help the price action move down. And like I said, lower time frames we're falling to the downside of these bearish top formations. So if really we start putting in daily candle body closes beneath 28,000, things are going to look very, very ugly. And because because the EMA ribbons are so, so tight and volatility metrics, which we'll talk about in a second, are calling for drastic, drastic moves in the markets very, very soon. We could witness a absolutely explosive move to the downside, finally ending this boring sideways chop, which has been in play for the markets for so, so long. So that's really all I've got. A chart I haven't pulled up for a while uh, is also this resistance line. I talked about this before, but if you put a gun to my head and told me to draw resistance, this area right here clearly seems like the most major, major resistance for Bitcoin right now that we have run back into. So a lot of signals right now telling us we should move lower. And in the higher time frames, of course, there's really only two price targets to keep your eyes on. We've got a CME gap to the upside at 36,000 and a CME gap to the downside at 20,200. And considering how Bitcoin looks like it's picking a decision in the lower time frames, your oscillators are already super overextended and these divergences, regular and hidden bearish divergences are getting stronger and stronger by the day. Uh, it's looking like Bitcoin may have already picked a direction and a close beneath 20,000. 
28,000 is really going to be the nail in the coffin for Bitcoin. So that's all I've got for the Bitcoin segment. Once again, close beneath 28,000. It looks like we'll be moving lower. The major price targets to keep your eyes on are, of course, this BART pattern down here at 24,000. Uh, the 200 week moving average, 25,500. And the CME gap to the downside at 20,200. It's not looking too, too likely that we're going to push up to this 36,000 CME gap judging by what's happening right now in the charts. Now, moving on to the stock market segment, there's really only three different charts and one piece of economic data that I want to update. Uh, let's start off with the economic data. So uh, as I talked about earlier on in the week, we do have some important job data coming out this week. Today, this was the US initial jobless claims, which basically tells us the number of people who are filing for unemployment. Now, this has been etching up higher and higher and higher the past few months as we have tons more initial jobless claims in the US. Now, it's very, very interesting because if we do come over to the S&P 500, uh, today, while initial jobless claims went up, meaning that, you know, if people are filing for unemployment, of course, we're eventually going to see this bleed into the unemployment rate as well. Uh, in a typical market sense, this is bearish news, which would be bearish for the markets. Uh, but the markets have a strange way of pricing in bearish news recently. And there's a very specific reason for that. Uh, normally, when we have bearish news like this with initial jobless claims going up, implying that the unemployment rate is going to go up, the markets would negatively respond to this. But right now, there's a lot of hopes of a Fed pivot. And if you have been keeping up with Fed commentary, you know exactly what the Fed are looking at. The Fed are looking at the unemployment rate. In fact, during Powell's last conference, there were tons of Congress members that were just absolutely ripping into him because he stated... We need to increase the interest rates. We need to make credit more expensive, even if we're not raising the interest rates. This is likely going to cause the US unemployment rate down here in green to take a run to the upside. And what the markets are hoping for is to get this over the way with. They're hoping that the unemployment rate is going to go up. This will reach you know, a level of maybe 5%, maybe 10% depends on who you're listening to, uh, around about 5 to 10% seems to be consensus of where we would be topping out for the unemployment rate. Maybe 10 seems a little bit higher to me, but we will uh, see how this does play out. But nonetheless, I'm off on a tangent already. Unemployment rate is going to be coming up to the upside because of the US initial jobless claims going to the upside. So what the markets are hoping for is for the unemployment rate to go to the upside. And because the unemployment rate is going to the upside, we will see a softening in labor market conditions. And subsequently, this will signal to the Fed, hey, the markets are finally in a position where we can start to pivot. And this is what the markets are bullish about today. So this is why, even though we do have bearish economic data coming out specifically for the job market, uh, the markets are kind of looking at this bearish news the other way. They're saying because we have this bearish news, because the unemployment rate is going to be going up because of this, which is also bearish, this means that we're one step closer towards a Fed pivot. So this is why on the daily time frame, you're seeing a slight bounce back in the futures. Bear in mind, uh, the S&P 500 is actually closed today. Uh, if you are looking at the futures markets, these are open up slightly on the daily today. So daily time frame, the S&P 500 is rallying. While this is rallying, you can actually see that we are trapped underneath this chart's double resistance, resistance from the downtrend in place since the 16th of August 2022, and resistance underneath this upwards trending line of support since the 13th of October, which has quite recently been double flipped as resistance. So markets are looking pretty ugly for the S&P 500 right now. And like I talked about, you know, the markets are really hoping that the unemployment rate is going to go up. And this is going to signal to the Fed that we can finally start pivoting. Because if you look back historically, when the interest rates were super high during the 2000 financial crisis, once the unemployment rate started going to the upside, this kind of signaled to the Fed that their job was, you know, almost complete and they could start cutting rates. Over in the 2007-2008 financial crisis, uh, this was a whole different storm in of itself, but you can actually see the unemployment rate started to itch up as the interest rate started to go to the downside, and this is what the markets are hoping for right now. They're hoping because we're seeing things go in the way of the Fed. The Fed wants the initial jobless. Well, they've said this before. They don't want the unemployment rate to go up. They don't want initial jobless claims to go up. But this is an unfortunate side effect of tightening credit standards. So 
It's just going to happen, whether they like it or not. Uh, they're raising the interest rates. They're raising the cost of borrowing money. And because of this, the unemployment rate is going to go up as a consequence to their monetary policy. Now, uh, once again, a lot of markets are hoping that interest rates go up and the Fed pivots is instantly going to be bullish for the markets. But if history is any indication, that is not the case. Look at what happened over here. I will, I'll mark in blue when the Fed pivots and I'll mark in green when the interest rates, uh, oh sorry, not the interest rates, I'll mark in blue when the interest rates started to pivot back down and I'll mark in green when the unemployment rate started to go back up. And to be honest, these pretty much always correlate with each other. So over here you can see back up to the upside of the screen with the S&P 500, looking down here you can see this is when the interest rates started to cut. Markets instantly broke back down to the downside, but if we're giving it the benefit of the doubt, for about a month or two, it did rally. Over here, for three months, we did rally. For over here, we actually rallied for about half a year before breaking back down. So, once again, in the immediate short term, of course, if the Fed come out next month and just cut the interest rates, that is going to be bullish for the markets in the immediate short term. Higher time frames, if history is any indication, this will actually tell us that the worst is yet to come for the markets. Now, if we move these over slightly, if I mark these in green now and we can look historically at what happens when the interest rates, or not the interest rates, once again, the unemployment rate really starts taking a run to the upside, you can see a very, very similar picture. Now over here, you could argue you could put it here or here when things really started to go parabolic, uh, but we see the same picture. The unemployment rate going up is definitely not bullish for these markets. Over here, 3rd of February, we started to get higher readings. And as you can see, you know, during this 2020 capitulation, unemployment rate absolutely skyrocketed. And it wasn't until it started to absolutely tear back down to the downside uh, that the markets were ready to come back up. So really what we're seeing here is in the immediate short term, the markets are pricing in this bearish news, hoping that a Fed pivot is uh, sooner than expected. But once again, unemployment rate going up is going to now happen because, of course, initial jobless claims are going up. People are filing for unemployment rate. This means uh, people are filing for unemployment, which means the unemployment is going to go up. And looking at these previous historical pieces of data, you can see this is actually going to be very, very bearish for the markets. The last chart I want to wrap up on is the VIX, the volatility index for the S&P 500, just very quickly. Now, since the S&P 500 topped out over here on the 4th of January 2022, you can see the VIX has come down and formed this orange box here. Let me remove this trend line and this trend line. This box here is what I want you to focus on. Every rally, every major rally that's happened uh, over on the VIX has come into confluence with this box right here. We normally reset volatility back down to the heart line. And even though we keep on coming back down to this same, same level, so volatility you know, since 2022 is pretty much at the same level. Uh, we are, you know, kind of gradually, 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 gradually pricing in higher volatility over time. But while the volatility has been going, you know, spiking up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, we come into this orange box every single time. And while we reset momentum into this orange box, you can see when we bounce for the VIX over here, let me clear up these once more time, you can see we bounce here for the VIX, go on a face tear to the upside, S&P 500 nukes. We bounce here for the VIX, S&P 500 nukes. We bounce here for the VIX, S&P 500 nukes. Bounce, mini nuke, uh, sizable bounce, uh, you know, pretty mini nuke still. But once again, we are coming into this major, major area where every single time for the past, what is this, 400 and something days? For the past 461 days, every time the VIX has come in here, the S&P 500 has proceeded with a sizable move to the downside. Now you pair this with the unemployment rate, which is going to be going up soon. You pair this with the fact that the S&P 500 is underneath double resistance. And we've just got bearish economic data coming out. It is not looking hot for the S&P 500. And we can expect the S&P 500 breakdown to definitely help Bitcoin to break down. So for today, my friends, that's all I've got. Uh, of, of course, I just summarized the S&P 500 for Bitcoin. You really just want to see that daily candle body close beneath 28,000. If you do, a lot of these signals like the EMA ribbons tightening, bearish divergence, oscillators becoming overextended, sitting at this resistance level, 
And of course, the CME gap down at 20,200. These might be coming very, very soon if we start to see volatility step up in a major, major way. 28,000, ladies and gentlemen, for Bitcoin. This is the next target that you want to keep your eyes on. If we start putting in daily candle body closes beneath it, it is not going to look pretty. So for today, my friends, that's all I've got. As always, if you do enjoy my content, let me know down below by leaving a like and a comment. Share the videos with your friends. If you want to further support the channel, feel free to click the join button and become a member today. Uh, make sure you come and follow me over on Twitter at 618 underscore cowboy. Uh, like I said, I know I haven't been posting too much of the past week because really, if we just look at the charts, uh, everything's been very, very sideways and pretty boring. Now, I value your time and I value my time. I want to make my content as valuable as possible. So when I do put out content, I'm putting out content that I believe is valuable and I believe that you're going to have and find value within these contents. I don't believe if I just make a new TA video every single 24 hours for Bitcoin when we're going sideways that I'm going to be providing you with any value whatsoever. So even though it sucks, even though I really want to get back to these daily uploads, uh, I can't just keep on making content uh, day in, day out when the markets are sideways. That's a waste of my time. That's a waste of your time. And when I created my YouTube channel, I set out to do things differently and I wanted to make a channel outside of all of the clickbait over on YouTube, outside of all the people pulling funny faces and saying emergency every single video. I set out to make a channel a little bit different than that and actually hope to provide value for free uh, on this platform, which is why, you know, if you come over to my educational playlist, a lot of people charge for the things that I do, providing educational content, uh, learning how to use all of these different things. I do all of this for free. I want to provide as much value as possible for this ecosystem. So with that said, if I'm making TA videos every 24 hours saying, hey guys, new update, price is the exact same as yesterday, the price targets are the same as yesterday. I'm not providing you with any value whatsoever. So hopefully, like I said, I really do want to get back to the daily content, but I want to start seeing these major moves develop for the market. And I think we're getting very, very close to that right now. So like I said, all I've got for you today, make sure to follow me over on Twitter at 618 underscore cowboy. It has been your boy Cowboy Trades. See you soon. I'm out. Peace.